Leander Fire Department has several items that make us strong, unique, in the ability to meet the challenges of today's culture and today's fire service. Located in Central Texas is a great economic environment that's given us the ability to have great gifts given to us by our community and great support. That support's included wonderful training facilities, great apparatus, but more importantly, it's been able to allow us to recruit both career and volunteer professionals that have a desire to serve the community. And those men and women were able to come to us and we're able to take care of them. We're able to provide them good benefits, good pay, good equipment, and allow them to be empowered to do their job. And that's what makes a difference every day for our community. The growth of the region has led to a lot of challenges with Williamson County being the fastest growing county in the United States over the past couple of years. In our region alone, they talk about 130 people a day come to our region. Back less than 10 years ago, we were a community of 7,000. Today, we provide services to about 35,000 people and that number grows every day. With those many people moving into an area where the green belts, the wildland urban interface, the tree lines are all right next to the home, it's created some real challenges for us. With our current development, what, what we've seen is the growth of the residential communities gravitate towards, just like most places, uh, the more scenic areas. And those scenic areas tend to have a lot of vegetation. In our case, there's a lot of uh, juniper um, or cedar that exists out in those areas. We had two fires in 2011. Uh, one was a horseshoe and one was a moon glow. Uh, total impacted acres between the two fires that were two weeks apart were 360 acres within the, the heart of our city. Up between those two fires, uh, we lost 15 homes uh, in the Horseshoe Fire and a uh, total loss of nine homes in the Moonglow Fire with numerous other homes impacted, uh, as well as several families that were displaced in both of those fires. One of the first things that we need to do is, is, is show the public or our customers, as we like to call them, we like to show our customers that this is a threat that does exist to make it real from the beginning. And once we establish that, then we go through a form of education. We want to provide them with tools and resources and knowledge so we can prepare our communities and our homes for that threat. What we've done to help with that wildland urban interface uh, threat is we've adopted a wildland urban interface uh, code. And that code has allowed us to address some of those issues surrounding the development. We have a standardized fire code. We have the ability to provide that information, but we realize not everything is black and white. The ability to work through development and work with them on the front side instead of just the inspection or the review on the back side. We work and train daily be it someone that's brand new, that's learning the initial, or be it someone that's been here for 15 years. There's something that they can learn. There's something that we can provide them. We are continuing to evolve in our training and move into some different disciplines to better prepare our team for anything they might encounter. The uh, technical rescue team is an all-encompassing team. Anything that just occurs that's outside of regular operations that needs to rescue a person. Uh, the technical rescue team comes into play, um, whether it be for specialized equipment uh, for extrication, um, shoring equipment, rope, or, or water-based equipment. We bring them in anytime the regular training isn't enough. The level of cooperation we have in Williamson County and be able to work with our partners is we're able to give and receive assistance with no obligation. We take care of the customers, whether it be ours or our neighbors, and we're there to provide a service. Having strong relationships with our neighbors allows us to be able to give and take um, assistance when needed. All of us are able to take care of our citizens better because of it. We have a unique challenge, being that we have a co we're a combination department. We have both volunteer and career staff. Our volunteer work normal day jobs, and our career staff are on once every three days. Our Cadet Academy for our volunteers is about a year long. It encompasses an EMT program, a Firefighter 1 and 2 program, a vehicle extrication technician, general rescuer, courage to be safe, 
a while in S-130 and 190 program. Part of our training program is live burns. Uh, we do interior live burns. We also do LPG live burns. Uh, this allows our volunteer staff, when they first come into the department, an understanding of what a live fire is about. Uh, it also allows our current staff to remain competent in the skill sets that they have. In addition to our regular fire training, we also do a specialized training in high angle rescue and some other rescue venues. Uh, so we will take uh, personnel and set up rigging system and extricate patients off the side of a building. In our department, when someone walks into our station, you cannot tell the difference between a career staff and volunteer staff. They have all the equal training, they have all the same equipment, um, so that's very important to us. One of the things that we know of is if you take care of your people, they'll take care of the customer. That is a big focus that we have, is the ability to support our people, make sure that we continue to develop them, educate them, and then in turn, we'll meet those growth and those challenges coming from a small bedroom community to a suburban community to a city.